Hi, um, I'm Roger Van Pelt for the Fresno Commodore Users Group, and today I'm going to be talking about the Commodore Magic Voice Speech Module, uh, which was a special cartridge for the Commodore 64 that came out in the mid 80s. Um, it accepts cartridges or can operate from the disk drive or tape to receive programming input. Uh, so let's see how it works here. So I have the Wizard of War cartridge plugged into it, uh, which will work without the magic voice. But uh, with the magic voice, you get um, added voice magic. So here are some of the vocabulary as it plays. And it operates uh, in tandem with the SID chip and with the graphics chip. So you actually have two separate audio channels. Um, it has a cord that bypasses the speaker, runs it through the speech module first, and then to your speaker system or a television set. Each cartridge has a vocabulary of words or utterances, as they call it. And in this particular game, it taunts you as you play. Right now it's doing um, a sort of robotic voice, but it can also do more human-like voices with... Uh, pitch changes and utterances, it can do male or female voices. <laughs> so I will try the Gorf cartridge for it right now. A lot of people have these two cartridges, so I figured it'd be nice to see what they sound like with the voice. It'll work in C64 mode on the Commodore 128 as well. Both of these were actual arcade games back in the early 80s, and the original games had voice as well. Gorf being um, sort of like Tron in that it has multiple games in one. Each level is a new game. The original had Galaxian as well, but for copyright reasons they couldn't include it in the home versions. Or not, I'm sorry, not Galaxian, but Galaga. Anyway, so you get the idea here. Well, and it'll also work with the disk drive. So let's see what that's like. If you turn on the computer with the module plugged in by itself and no cartridge in it, it'll automatically uh, ch check the disk drive to see if there's a program disk in there. So if you have a disk drive, either unplug it or put in a disk drive if you're going to have it on. Otherwise, the module will not turn on. Okay, now we're in C64 mode. Let's see. I'm going to bring up the directory. Okay, let's run the demo here. This is from a demo disc that uh, originally came with a speech module. I'll give you a better idea of its capabilities. Let's 
see. I do also have the instructions for this. It has a list of uh, utterances that you can type in with corresponding numbers. You can add these to your basic programs. Let's see now. It only came, there are only a few cartridges that came out for this uh, speech module. Uh, it said that there were supposed to be um, a few here, Gorf, Wizard of War, Counting Bee, ABCs, um, The Spelling Bee, and the Magic Talking Garden book series. Apparently that one never actually uh, came out. And there's another one, Magic Desk Plus, or One Plus. So if you have the Magic Desk cartridge, One Plus, it's supposed to have speech as well with this uh, speech module. Let's run the demo. Hi, I'm the Commodore 64 speech module, the most realistic voice synthesizer on the market. I plug into the 64 just like a game cartridge. You can plug your existing cartridges into me and play them as usual, or now you can get new game cartridges that talk to me. I can speak in different voices. We can play games. I might even be you. I can even sing. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Ba, 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 work so high, like a diamond in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. We can play games. I have my own vocabulary of over 100 words that you can use directly from BASIC. And the best part is that the speech module, like all other Commodore peripherals, plugs directly into the Commodore 64 without any other required interfaces. Hi, I'm the Commodore 64 speech module, okay. the most realistic voice synthesizer on the market. I plug in. Now, there are other things on the disk. repeats too. Um, so okay it was using phrases and utterances as it calls them in here uh, which it can do 235 I believe. Um, it lists them all in the instruction manual. Now, 235 utterances uh, accepts talking software on cartridge tape or diskette. And you can program it using BASIC. Accepts additional vocabularies on diskettes. Uh, generates speech and music simultaneously. And in the back of the book, it has a list of the utterances and corresponding numbers that you can use in your BASIC programs. Um, some of them are not complete words because they're similar to phonemes that are used by uh, modern speech programs. In other words, because the wor words aren't always pronounced exactly as they're spelled, so um, it's spelled sort of, sort of like each syllable as its own separate word and phonetically. 
Um, and it does have actual English written words. Like for instance, um, 13 would here would be uh, in a phoneme, T-H-I-R, and then teen is a separate word, or thir, and then T-Y as a separate word for 30. Um, the built-in vocabulary isn't very large. I think it was only 100 and something words, but you can add a lot more uh, words to it with your um, program. Okay, well if you have a Commodore Magic Voice, as I found out myself, it can be tricky to get up and running uh, because it's not very intuitive. So, it's good to know the proper way to hook up the cables. It comes with three cables. Um, a standard RCA mail to RCA mail cable, an RCA mail to RCA female cable. If you don't have this, you can just get a male to female adapter at Radio Shack or somewhere like that. And it also comes with a Commodore AV cable adapter that, um, that has just an audio output. And this you don't really need unless you want to do a really retro setup where you're using the RF modulator in your Commodore computer. Then you would have the RF video hooked up the normal way. This would go into the 5-pin or 8-pin video AV output, and this would go to an audio amplifier. But since most people don't use those today, it's kind of obsolete. So what we'll do is hook it up uh, the better way, not needing that cable at all. Okay, so we're going to Take the cable that has the female RCA jack, hook it into the audio input, and on your monitor cable, you take the audio output from the computer and plug it into the female end of that jack. It is now being input to the speech module. Then you plug this into the audio out jack. As you can see, mine's been labeled here. And this goes into the TV speakers, or the monitor speaker, or your audio amplifier. And when you turn on the computer, you have to remember either to unplug your disk drive or to, if you've got it on, if you've got it plugged in, turn it on with a disc in it. Otherwise, all you get is a black screen. Or, you need a cartridge to be plugged in, and it'll automatically boot to the cartridge. Otherwise, it boots to basic. Well, this did take some doing to find. I bought this one on eBay from a gentleman in England who was uh, selling it for his father who had recently passed away. Um, but uh, I managed to get a good deal on this. They're, they're out there. I've seen a few of them, but they're semi-rare, I think. Uh, anyway, well, thanks for your attention, and I hope that you all enjoy yourselves at Convex. Have a good time.